I was at college in my second year, and I missed the piano because I took lessons all the time when I was home. I had a piano upstairs that she never used. So I asked her if I could move it to my apartment, which was in the basement. And she said, sure. She said, you got to move it, though. OK, so I called the moving company, and that was in 1955 or 56. And they came down, they moved it into my apartment from upstairs for nine dollars. <laughs> it was an old player piano. It had a roll and it actually still played, not well, but it did play. The only role was of the William Tell Overture, which I'd never heard the front of before. <laughs> and but I struggled with it. I, I found out I didn't know how to tune. <laughs> I thought it was really hard to tune. <laughs> I found out I didn't have the right tools. So I went to a music store, I bought a cheap tuning hammer, which was pretty much no good. I didn't use it much after doing, working on that piano. It was hard. I worked 10 hours the first time going through the piano. And it was better, but it wasn't in tune. So I went to a music store and I got a better tuning hammer and I got some mutes. And I kept at it. Well, guess what? I found I could tune pianos and people would pay me to do it. Oh, that was an interesting revelation. <laughs> I never thought about that, that I could be a piano tuner. No one ever taught you? No, I taught myself. But I was smart enough to get, get read up and get the input I needed from, at least from books at the time. I didn't know any other tuners. It gets harder to hear the beats. Not Has for me. affected your ability? Well, not for me. I can hear perfectly. That's the one part, of, one of my senses that hasn't failed. <laughs> my eyes are pretty weak and I have uh, other problems from age. But hearing isn't one of them. I had a man, a, a man working for me at the time, John Davis. And his father was a, a designer. A, a, and he had a, a shop or a, a, a office in this building here. And he told me to come over here because there, there was space available in this building and he liked the landlord. So originally, I, I moved all the pianos into the area the big room that's behind this this room. Got here. How many pianos did you have? We moved about 40 pianos over here to start with. That's all we we had. I accumulated that many when I was at at um, Main Street. Now the problem with pianos that people don't want or they get traded in is that they tend to collect and nobody wants them, or some very few people do. At your peak, how many did you have here? Mm, I don't have a good total, but it was probably around 300. But I haven't done a count yet either, a recent count. Because other people have brought, pianos have come in here so fast and gone out. I, that what, what, one woman wanted me to teach her how to tune in a weekend because she wanted to tune the next week. I said, no, that's not possible. <laughs> it, a, lot of, a lot of people that don't tune pianos, but Rely on, don't have an understanding of what is, what's involved. Why you have 200 and some 30 strings that are at a tension close to the breaking point of the wire. <laughs> and you have to put these in some kind of an order that is stable and, and produces results that last. Impossible when you first start to do it. That's impossible, you know? But no, it can be done. It's been done for years. Any well, I'm hoping that it's going to stay right here and be and be the museum that it could be, and I am uh, anxious to have somebody else take over the management of as a, as a museum, and I think that can happen 
and I, and I could supervise it for a while, but I'm getting old enough so that I, want, I don't want to have to come down here anymore. I want to talk about pianos and I want to tune, but the day of work, working visits and commuting in here every day is not, is, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's more than I can do now. I'm going to be 88 in September and I, want to, I have to have some space, more space than I have. As interested in this type of thing. That's probably true because the, the life people live now is very focused on cell phones, one thing, and the internet, second thing, which to me are both superfluous and unnecessary and just take people's attention when it needs to be on, on, on living and not on stuff. Piano. Is there one that just makes you happy to be around it? or one that you feel all, all pianos make me happy to be around them, but I do have a a chickering grand in the other room that belongs to a customer of mine that I don't know if I'll ever see again. But it's a chickering from 1897 and it's got a, a case that's veneered with sandalwood. And I've never seen another piano that was all sandalwood. It's a very interesting piano. The utmost desire for this place is to have a place where people can come, play on pianos, Listen to records if they want. I've got managed to get 2,000 records here from a man that died and gave me his record collection. And they're, rec they're actually more than one copy of some of, of, of different artists. And they're, it's good, good stuff. There's, I don't need it at home. I got a lot of classical records at home already. <laughs> you know? So the people could do that. They could, take, they could practice on. We could make a, a practice room or two that's quiet so that people could play a practice pianos if they're taking lessons. We could possibly give lessons out of this place if I get a, two, a teacher up here. I, I think it's an asset to the community. It could be like a cultural space. And, and I'm trying to give it to the Cultural Alliance in Fitchburg. I've already given the Historical Society a piano that they haven't picked up yet, but it's going to go. So, you know, I mean, I, I'm not expecting to get paid for the pianos. I didn't pay for most of them. They just got here. So, and then somebody comes in and they want to have a kid taking lessons and they don't have any money. Fine, take play every piano that you like, you know? So, <laughs> is that something you'd like to Well, I don't know if you'll all hear that, but that's true. I was down in, in, in Pennsylvania visiting my old friend from the hippie days who was in the Far Cry. Uh, which was a band that we, that's an interesting story. We had a concert on August 2nd, 1969. I got 3,500 people to go to Mason, New Hampshire to a concert that was two weeks before Woodstock. We had 3,500 people. And we had people, artists like Ben Morrison there. Whom, I gave a ride to the liquor store in West Townsend so he could get a bottle of brandy in my BMW. <laughs> I don't have a fancy car anymore, but and those days are gone. But that area is now a strawberry farm, and it's still there. And I always remember I go by it. That's where we had the festival. It's up near my home. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh, back in those days, I was a, well, I was learning to be a hippie like the other hippies, and uh, I took such dangerous things as LSD. And once when I was taking LSD at a friend of mine's place down in Pennsylvania, he said, I got all these people that need their pianos tuned. And I tuned, I think it's six or seven pianos, stoned out of my mind. They, they, they came out well, too. <laughs> okay. the, the piano is probably the most important product in terms of a factory product that's ever been made in terms of, uh, of something artistic. We don't. We spend lots of money on our things that these will build. But the piano, pianos were made at a time after the railroad expansion, but before automobiles were produced in the, in the quantity. The, in fact, 1904 was the peak year of piano production. So, we have a big. In those days, people loved the pianos, and the, the companies couldn't make enough of them. And now people take, consider them in the way and something that no one uses. That's, that's too bad because it tells you about well, the way society has crumbled. I look at a piano as a holy object because 
first of all, when you're tuning, you work directly for the Lord. Nobody else can tell you that it's right or wrong. You're, 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 you know, can tell you. And that's a gift that you get. And so you have to be humble about what you, what you can do. Uh, and I've been successful at that. I, I have a very good relationship with my spirit and, and, and tuning and, and things like that. I think it's a wonderful occupation. Because I think a piano is a holy instrument. Because anything that has a tension strings that vibrate is, is a work of, of art. It's, it's a musical instrument. And it's a holy thing. <laughs> it's the way I feel.